special welcome to any visitors to our parish this morning. And we'd also like to welcome all of the Brother Knights here for this special Mass. Our opening song is number 115 in the Missalette. 115 in the Missalette, Ashes. You can actually hear him today. That's right, that's right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the <clears throat> Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. 
This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith. To this grace in which we stand and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the good Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you might proclaim his gospel worthily and well, Father, the Son.
truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I may never thirst again. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself, with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. And when he comes, He will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still, no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come, See a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, 
Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, In four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for, Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town came to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everybody. A sign that Easter is approaching is that the Gospels get longer. And, uh, but I was um, inspired at RCIA this past week. Uh, we were praying through this Gospel, and, uh, and one of the people in there said, um, it's interesting how God gives this Samaritan woman a task. That's kind of how it all begins. And I was looking in our other readings too. It's like, man, God always gives us a task. He always gives us a task. Starting with the first reading, Moses. When I was a kid, I thought Moses probably took about 25, 50 of his buddies out of the land of slavery in Egypt to the promised land. Because, you know, you see like the picture Bibles and, and there's like a few people around. I was rereading Exodus this week. There were 600,000 men, plus their wives, plus their children, that Moses was taking through the desert, out of Egypt and slavery, to the promised land. That's a big group. (laughs) And how could you do it? I don't know. God gives Moses this task. I want you to free my people. And he's probably going, it's a little bit much for me. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how to do that. And then in the midst of that perilous journey across the desert, task after task after task is given to Moses. And, and here in our first reading today, we're hearing about how the people are grumbling and they're bickering and they're saying, let's just go back. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, Pharaoh treated us cruelly and we were slaves, but at least we had food and a place to sleep. Let's just go back and make the most of it. And I was thinking of how hard it must have been for Moses to shepherd all of those people in the midst of their question. In the first read, they're about to stone him. And they're thirsty, and they're angry, and they're fighting. And they're going, is God even with us? Is it even worth it, what you have in mind? What is this promised land? Once we get there, we're going to have to build houses? Let's just go back. And God gives him this task. He says, no, keep going. I kept thinking, how hard it must have been for Moses to maintain a vision of where they were going and articulate it to the people. But that was the task. And praise God, he did it. And the Lord was with him in it. Our gospel today starts with a kind of an in, sort of a, a line that people, we just read over a lot, but God tells the disciple, or Jesus tells the disciples, Go to Samaria and get some food. Well, that would have been dangerous. You could have been killed for that. It'd be almost like 
go in between Russia and Ukraine. But Jesus says, go, go to the city, get some food. And the task seemed dangerous. Then he gives the task to the Samaritan woman, a woman who seemed completely unworthy of any task. She had had five husbands, and now she's with a different one. And, and she says, you want me to get you a drink? That's the task. Jesus says, I, give me a drink. And Jesus gives a task. He always gives us a task. Have you noticed? Isn't it lovely? God always gives us a task. Sometimes like Moses, we think that's too big for me. I can't do it. Sometimes like the disciples, we think that's a little too out of my comfort zone. Seems a little treacherous. I don't know. Sometimes it's like that Samaritan when we're going, we're not, I'm not worthy for that task, Lord. Don't you know what a sinner I am and you want me to teach Sunday school? You want me to do, you want me to head up this ministry? You want me to be a part of this? And yet God always gives us a task and not just one, but a bunch. And that's a good thing because that's how much God trusts us. That's how much God loves us, that he's always inviting us into his life, into his work on earth. Here's the thing. Think about the tasks that you have in your family life, the tasks that you have in your work, in your school, all those things. But then think about the tasks that we have in our church, which is the body of Christ, and how to keep this whole thing going, we all have to say yes to our tasks and to yes to the ways that God invites us to serve him. And the thing of it is, like, we don't do these tasks in order to be like a good disciple or, or like to, to appease some angry monster of a God who's keeping score in heaven. And if we don't do the task, then he's going to kick us out. We don't do our tasks for that. We do it. We do them because we're compelled to, because we want to, because we can't imagine not. It's, we're, it's kind of like this living water that, that flows through us. This, the Lord wants us to be channels of his grace in all of the different places that we go to. We're supposed to be like big old channels for the grace of God. That, that, and through all of these different tasks and different things, like the Lord is working in that. And the Lord, the Lord, the Lord wants us all to be a part of it. He wanted that woman, despite her past, Despite her sinfulness, he wanted her. And that's why he gave her a task. And the salvation of people depends on us doing our tasks, doing our things because we're compelled to, because we want to, because we, we, we can't imagine not. And um, the reason that the Lord, I think, even gives us a task to begin with is because he wants to draw us closer to himself. You know? And I look back at all of the different ways that I got more and more and more involved in my faith and the different things that were kind of, you know, sometimes in the church, once you say yes to one thing, you get a lot of other things put on your plate. And, uh, and that's just kind of how it works. They teach us that in the seminary. Uh, but, but it's like, it, it's a beautiful thing because... Because through everything I said yes to, the more I wanted to do. And the more I was like, this is awesome. And the Lord, through all of those tasks, was drawing me and others closer to himself. So let's thank our Lord that, that, uh, that he trusts us and that he gives us tasks. Let's do them with all of our heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, God. 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and pray to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers to God. For Pope Francis, that he celebrates ten years as our Pope, God will gift him with health and mind and body and continue to inspire him as he leads the Church to greater unity and deeper love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may be a source of living water for all who thirst for meaning and purpose in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will touch the hearts of the alienated from the Church and reconnect them with the community of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the lonely, the discouraged, the emotionally disturbed, and all those who need our prayers this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we recognize the gift of water and work to conserve this precious resource, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will give strength to those recovering from natural disasters or grieving the death of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will end the bloodshed in Ukraine, in our city streets, schools, and families, and turn hearts toward forgiveness and cooperation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of the living and for those who have died, especially for Emily Merriweather, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we turn to you with these prayers, all the prayers of our hearts. In your love, we ask you answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song is number 541 in the music issue. 541, Peace is Flowing Like a River.
blessed be God. and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you both. God bless you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we to give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Charles, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, Deacon. Peace. Hey, thank you. Peace, you guys. God bless you. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul.
the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Of Christ, the body of Christ. May God bless you. May God bless you. The body of Christ. 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 May God bless. May God bless. The body of Christ. 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 May God bless you. The body of Christ. I will bless the Lord at all times. The body of Christ. 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 So good to me. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. God bless you. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Glorify the body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, in our nourished well still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what has been brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to do that one after the announcements. <clears throat> Religious ed classes, grades 1 through 8, this Wednesday will come to church at 645 for the Stations of the Cross, but parents and anyone else is welcome to join them. And also Tuesday, March 14th, that's this Tuesday, at 7 p.m. we have a parish council meeting in the hall. And next Sunday will be the KFC breakfast, so plan to stay and enjoy f fellowship and good, sh and good food. And also there's confirmation class today here at St. Vincent's at 4, and the youth group is at 6 at St. Joe. And all high school youth are invited. Also, there's, at that time, there's a practice for living in the way of the cross. And I hope you all are filling up your rice bowls. And if, you, if it's already full, you can, bring it, you can start bringing them and putting them in the big rice bowl up here. And you may have noticed an extra envelope in the pews for Catholic Relief Services. Well, that collection is next Sunday. And um, we didn't take up a special collection for Turkey and Syria because we knew that this one was coming up and this is for the um, Catholic Relief Services which helps all over the world. So they, especially they would be helping in Turkey and Syria at this time. And also right now, to, right after Mass today, the Knights of Columbus is opening up to everyone uh, after 142 years, their initiation ceremony. So you're welcome to stay for the ceremony if you care to. Excellent. Did well, I bless. miss anything? I don't think so. I think you got it all. Praise the Lord. Everybody have a good day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing song is number 558. 558 in your music issue, Glory and Praise to Our God. Trust in 